Welcome to the Platform AI tutorial. You're going to want to start by logging in, which we can do in the top right hand corner under Get Started. Once you've logged in, if this is your first time logging in or if you don't have any existing projects or collections, it will redirect, redirect you directly to the collections page. So we can see some public collections down here, which you could use to start a project. But what we're going to do is upload our own project, so you can, or our own collection. You can do that by clicking on Upload Images. And you can either drag and drop files, or we can click on it to open an explorer. Now, I have a subset of the Fruit 360 data set, which is available on Kaggle. And it just has a collection of apples, avocados, some bananas, and some cherries. We're going to select all of them by clicking Command A. And we are going to open them in our uploader. We're going to give it a name and call it fruit subset. And then we're going to upload. Now that the collection has finished uploading, we can see it here under our collection called the fruit subset. Now, if I want to add more images to this, I could click on the plus here. Or if I want to delete it, I could click on delete. But I want to use this collection to start a project. So I'm just going to click on it. See, now we're here at the new create project or create new project, and I'm going to give it a description labeling fruit. And we can click create. Now we are at the project home screen. So what you can see down here, all these little dots, these are different projections. And a projection is basically a way that the platform tries to present data separated according to different characteristics. Now the data set we've uploaded is already very easy to separate. You can see we have some types of apples here. We have our bananas in the top right hand corner, avocados in the bottom right, and then some of these cherries and apples are, are mixed together. And if we navigate through the projections, we can see that you know the objects move around. Some of the projections do a better job of separating certain classes and some of them do a worse job. So the first couple projections tend to be uh, the best ones. Oftentimes, you can see we get good separation here. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create some labels. So we can go up here to this text box, type in the name of a label like banana. And I can click the plus. That creates a banana. You can see that there are zero images assigned to this. I can actual, actually simultaneously assign labels and create new labels. So for instance, this right here, I know this is a green apple, so I can click on it. Now you see I have one image selected, and I can either assign that image to the banana class, or I can create a new label called green apple. And then when I click plus, because I have at least one image selected, it's going to automatically assign that apple to that class. And we can see that being represented right here. So I can do the same thing. I can take one of the cherries, create a new label. Right? And again, the cherry has already been assigned there. And now we can do that for avocado. Assign that image. And we can do the same thing for banana. Except for banana, we already have the class. So now that I've selected an image, I can literally just click on the banana. Now we have each of the classes. Oh, we still have red apple. So I'm going to click on a red apple and create the label. Now, uh, the idea behind platform is that you don't need to label all the images. You can, I have, for instance, 2,700 images uploaded. I'm seeing a subset of 500 right here. Rather than labeling all 2,700, I can label some of them, and the platform will then use that to train a machine learning model and predict labels for the other class. But one image per class isn't enough, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a subset of images. So for instance, you can just lasso by drag clicking. And now I have 70 images. I can see that these are all green apples. So I'm going to assign them all to the green apple class. And do the same thing for some of these avocados. Assign them to the avocado class. It looks like most of the stuff on the far left here is cherries. So I'm going to be careful not to cross over into the apple region. I'm going to assign all that to the cherries. And do the same thing for some of these apples here in the middle. And then last but not least, we need some bananas. Lots of some bananas, assign some bananas. So now that we've labeled some of the images, how do we predict labels for the other images? The way we do that is by clicking train model up here in the top left. When I click on that, a uh, platform is going to start a training job. So as you can see, uh, the projection now looks a little different. The first time uh, 
platform loads a project, it doesn't actually know what the labels are. We haven't assigned any. Now that platform knows we have five distinct labels, it has a better idea of how to separate the data. And it's also using a model that's been trained specifically on this data. You can also see that after training a model, we get a report of the accuracy up here. And what this is, is basically telling us that we can assume that roughly 92% of the labels it has predicted across all the 2,700 images in our data set will be accurate. Now, if this isn't high enough for you, you can actually continue to add more labels. So what I'm going to do is select all of these, assign them to be avocado, and we can see that the number of images now increases to 131. We're going to do the same thing for the red apples. Now, with the red apples, I want to make sure that all of these are actually apples. So I'm actually going to edit this. I'm going to look at these in grid view. I'm going to look for any cherries. And it looks like these are all apples. Yep. So we can go back to the projection. We're going to do the same thing for the green apples. So as the green apples. And last but not least, our cherries. And the bananas. Now that we have even more data, what we're going to do is train this again and see if it increases the accuracy past 92%. So sure enough, we can see here that the accuracy went up to 100. Now, this data set was specifically chosen to make this relatively easy because the data is very separable. In most scenarios, it won't be quite this easy. You'll probably have to iterate through this a couple times and need more than like 150 or 200 images per class. But in general, if you're dealing with a data set that's, you know, tens of thousands of images, this will be much, much, much quicker than labeling them manually. So now that we've predicted labels for all the images, we'd want to download them. And we can do that up here by simply clicking download prediction file. And there we go. Once the CSV file has been prepared, you'll see it in your downloads. And we'll take a look at this quickly so we can see what it actually looks like. Now we have five columns. We have the label name, or the file name. This is the name of the image as it was uploaded you know, from your computer or whatever device you're using. This is the label class. So some of these we man labeled manually. So you'll see that those have something in the labeled class. But if we scroll further down, eventually we'll probably find some that don't have anything in the labeled class. Sure enough, here we get to a section where we start to not have anything in the labeled column because the rest of these images haven't been labeled, and this is where the predictions come in handy. So if we go back up to the top, we can see that the third column is the predicted class, and the fourth column is the predicted confidence. So this is basically how strong the prediction is, or how confident the model is that the prediction is accurate. And you can see that for most of these, it's 99% or more. Again, this data was chosen to make this easy, so this is not a surprise here. The final column is the image URL, where the image is actually stored in the back end for platform purposes. This is not really relevant for end users. So the final thing is, if you're labeling images, and here you can see that I've labeled almost all of these red apples, and I need to label more red apples, but there are no more, you can use this change set, and what platform will do is get a random batch of 500 images and display that here for you. If you want to get an overview of all your projects, you can click on the Platform AI logo and you'll see the My Project icon pop up. And if we click on that, it'll take us back to My Projects. Now we only have one project here, but as you can see, we have you know some of the images we have and it shows us that we have five labels. We can also rename the project. For instance, if we wanted to add a different description, then we could do that, or we can delete the project. 